What's up, everybody? This is your boy Bliss is coming to you. I'm coming to you with something a little bit different today. Um, again, as always, if you dig this content, man, go on and smash that subscribe button. Today, I'm talking with my good homie, my partner, the bow tied one, the one and only Jonathan Moody. And we are going to talk about some. Uh, uh, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about endorsements. Endorsements. And that endorsements, is what we're doing. That's right. So we're at the end of, you know, NAM season is over and everybody who's a, an artist or a, a, a distributor or something like that, they know that whole mad dash to get endorsements, why we want endorsements. Anyway, we're just going to get into it a little bit. Before I get started, I want to say that uh, John Moody has a dope album uh, out and I want him to just say a few words about that real fast. Take it away, John. All right, man. I can do that. And thank you for the uh, the glowing endorsement already. See what I did there? 100. No, but uh, uh, yeah, I put out a seven-song EP in June. It's called Music for Our Hands. Uh, it's a solo uh, bass thing, and it's um, and that means exactly that. It's it's me just uh, playing uh, in a studio, uh, just me, one track. Um, Everything I wrote myself, uh, very classically influenced, because that's kind of how I grew up. Uh, got a little rock and funk in there too, but um, that's it, you know. And it's available on uh, Bandcamp at monjudy.bandcamp.com, or you, there's also other ordering instructions if you go to my website at justmoody.com. Uh, you also get to see lots of bow ties and things of that nature. <laughs> and uh, if you're the streaming kind, it's on Spotify, it's on Amazon, it's on uh, Apple Music, and you can also get it from any of the download places as well. So that's my uh, that's my five second spiel. Dope. Hey man, one of the things I really like about about this record, I mean, there's there's tons of you know bass records out there. Um, I, it was music that I could really listen to. A lot of times, this is not to knock anybody else or what they're doing or whatever, but uh, a lot of times you hear a record and just like, oh man, you know, this has been done, that's been done. But there's a lot of really fresh content, um, a lot of real cool, listenable content. I like to put it on for, for drives and stuff like that. So I enjoy it, and I think that if you're watching this, you should go pick one up. All right, so Mr. Moody. Outside of being an artist, you also have uh, some experience on the other end, on the distributor, manufacturer end. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm one of those few people that actually gets to straddle the line between um, artist and manufacturer um, in that I'm also, uh, I, I've said right now, the chief janit janitorial officer at GHS <laughs> Strings because I just handle a lot of stuff, clean up some things, but... Um, uh, get to talk to artists, uh, get to talk to builders, and all sorts of things in that respect. So I get to see the other side of um, the artist endorsement equation. Oh, and that was also in um, after about years and years of kind of doing the artist endorsement thing as a performer. So it was kind of neat to um, be able to walk in after a couple of years of doing the one side, see the other side, and kind of just put everything together. Cool, man. Cool. So let me ask you this. Um, you know, I've got some endorsements. You've got some endorsements with, you know, obviously you're with GHS, but you, you did I say GHS? Is that what I said? I think I think that's what I said, GHS, and I'm not editing that out. You've got some relationships. I've got some relationships, and I'm sure you get a ton of questions about, you know, about how to get in the door with companies. Let me start by asking you, why should anybody even want an endorsement deal? Uh, because you want free stuff? No, man. That's <laughs> not the way you're supposed to answer that question, man. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, no, no I mean, because, well, first off, there there really is no free stuff anymore. Right. But, um, you know, the biggest thing I would say is an endorsement, especially as an artist, is it gives you, um, well, a couple of things. I mean, one, it gives you a little bit of notoriety, you know? Um you know, you got two artists that are about the same um, skill level and things, but somebody's got this got an endorsement. Uh, you know, a little bit more, I guess, street cred in some regards, sure. maybe. Sure. Um, sure. So there's that. I mean, the other thing too is you have a, uh, especially in this day of social media, having an endorsement is uh, kind of gives you an added avenue to get your stuff pushed out on. Sure. You know. Um, sure. So I mean, those would be the the two big ones I would 
I would say more, especially in this day and age of social media, it's just more of just that it helps you reach more people, you know? Sure, um, sure. You know, if we if we use my my album as a uh, as kind of the thing, me just pushing it out myself uh, reaches you know about a very small amount of people. Me sure. sending a press release to all my uh, companies that I endorse uh, and having them push it out on their networks reaches a much larger audience. Sure, I I want to say something about that real quick. Mm-hmm. So you you just said a key phrase. Um, you said the companies that you endorse, right? Exactly. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of questions um, about, uh, you know, people say you're endorsed by such and such a person and or such and such a company. Right. And, <clears throat> excuse me, as you mentioned, they do like Aguilar just did, uh, you know, I did a big ad campaign for them. I've done right. ad campaigns for, for Mono. And, you know, these things have, have definitely helped me, you know, kind of, get in front of a few more eyes. Right. But the, the, the relationship really is I endorse those companies. When I, mm-hmm. you know, I remember, uh, you know, I was playing like SWR and things like that. Nothing against SWR, but when I heard Aguilar for the first time, like 10 plus years ago, right. um, I was just like, I was sold on that. And so I could only afford at the time the, the, the real entry level stuff. Like my first cabinet was an S410. Mm-hmm. Um, I got that. I contacted, you know, I contacted uh, the folks over at Aguilar, and I just said, "Hey, I, I love your stuff. Right. Um, I'm using your stuff." And at the time, I was really this is like, this is you know, MySpace was really like the thing. <clears throat> Facebook wasn't really popping. Careful, like you're gonna that, so. you're gonna uh, tell people how old we are that way. <laughs> I think people already know, Bowtie yeah. Man. Yeah, uh, I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. There's no gray hairs on this at all. <laughs> well. You know, so, you know, I was doing, I was doing a bunch of stuff and, and they were like, hey, you know, keep us, you know, keep us posted. So there was a, a different side. It was, I wasn't just like going and, and having my hands out. I had all Aguilar gear before I became an endorser. Right. Uh, an, an, an official endorser. And I think the, the verbiage I might have used was like, I would like to, you know, have a more uh, official relationship with you guys. But yeah. my end of the relationship is that I talk about. Aguilar gear. Yes, there are times when I have to go somewhere and I can't get an Aguilar backline. Right. But that's always my request. That's always my <clears throat> first request. Yep. If I can't get an Aguilar backline, I'm not advertising. I'm not going out and say, because everybody knows I live and breathe. I bleed Aguilar amplification. Right. So even in even in this conversation, I'm in. I am endorsing that company. Right. So. Right. Um. So, so that is kind of leads me, and I, I got some questions written down, but I'm kind of jumping around here a little bit because uh, you know how we do. We kind of roundtable me and you. So exactly, um, re- we're, we're talking about relationships, right? Right. So, exactly. You, mm-hmm. So, in your opinion, how how important are relationships? Dude, relationships really are it. You know, that's the biggest thing more than anything else. It's like you said, um, kind of the same thing. Like my first endorsement was um, with Warwick. You know, and I've been playing one of their bases since 1997. Right. Yeah, look at me talking about people, you know, about you aging us, and then I just drop a date like that. <laughs> All you those sure millennials did. are going to be sitting there being like, that was, I was three when that happened, and I'm just going to cry. Oh. But, um, you know, I've been using... Or worse, when they're not even born when that happened. <sighs> mm. We're, We're on, on the right side of the dirt, though, baby. That's true. That's you know true. I mean? So, but um, <clears throat> you know, so I approached them, you know, a couple years back, as I was starting to get a lot more uh, big gigs going, and uh, you know, for me, musical theater stuff was just like I was gigging, you know, probably about six days a week, doing about nine gigs a week, you know. Right. Right. So I just kind That's of approached lot. them, and it was kind of that thing. It's like I've been using this bass for years. You know, what would it? Right. What would it take? Like you're saying, what would it take to bring this relationship to the next level? And, you know, and the biggest thing, you know, between, you know, and I think you'd agree with this, is if um, they would have told me no or if Aguilar would have told you no, we'd still use that stuff anyway. Yep. You know? Yep. 100%. You know? And that's that's the big key on this. Like you're saying, it's not reaching out for a handout or anything like that. It's that... It's the relationship of being like, look, I'd use this stuff regardless. 
what can I do to to get a more you know a more valuable relationship with the company with the people that are making right. these products um, right. you know that kind of thing well dude honestly let me let me backtrack a little bit um, even before that you know I live in the Bay Area and uh, anybody who knows uh, Daryl Anders knows he's he's you know Daryl is like a like a like a big brother to me um, great friends he and I were great friends um, well, we, we were kind of just getting to know each other a bit, but we were becoming, you know, really good friends about 10, 10 years ago, 10 or 11 years ago. And um, it was, you know, I didn't know that he knew people at Aguilar. I knew that he played Aguilar gear, and I also really loved his sound. So he kind of in, introduced me a little bit, but even that wasn't like, okay, this guy knows this guy. Right. No, it was like, I think the day that I became an official Aguilar endorser, I can tell you, I remember the day like it was yesterday. I was going to L.A. I was doing like this weird turnaround trip uh, from the Bay to L.A. And I was going to play a show, uh, 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 an HBO show. I'm going to just lay it out. Mm -hmm. The show was called uh, My Bear Lady. Okay. Okay. And what it was, was it was like a reality show where these porn stars... Um, were uh, I see you sat up in your chair a little bit. Man. There you go. I'm like, <laughs> well, now he, he, he had me at porn stars. Yeah, so that so 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 these porn stars were like doing like you know charity events or whatever, blah blah blah. So a singer I was going down to do this thing with. Um, I was like, I really this is HBO. I really want to, you know make a good impression right so i you know I, I built this relationship i had stayed in touch with the folks at aguilar and i said hey man i'm i'm going down to uh going on la now mind you i had my own aguilar rig yeah but i but i wanted to use something bigger for this deal so i said hey i i, I want to you know i want to use uh, a db750 which i didn't own at the time right uh and they were like okay do this do this tell them that you're an artist, mm -hmm. and I was I was like, "What? I'm an artist," and that was you know that was kind of led to some other stuff. But you know, it I, I think knowing people on the other end, I think they could smell insincerity like a fart in a car. Yes, I did say that. Yeah. Um, you know, so when people come with their hands out, you know, again, I go, I say, "Hey, look, I really love your your stuff." I, I, I want to play it. I'm going to play it regardless, but, right. you know, they, they reward me with, you know, with an artist discount. You know what I yeah. mean? I don't yep. get any... Every now and again, I might get something for free. Yeah. But nine out of ten times, 9.5% of the time, I don't get anything for free. Yeah, um, exactly. But I get, I get an artist discount, but my end of the bargain is, this is the stuff I use. You should use this... Social media, I'm hashtagging the hell out of everything I use, all yep. that good stuff. So anything, I, I I just rambled on a bit about that, um, which was you know we talked about it already. I had this on my list was was how did you get your first endorsement deal? Right, exactly. Um, so let's you know we talked a little bit about this as well. Let's get let's get into this. What types of activities do you think people should be actively engaging in if they if they want uh, if they want these kind of deals I mean especially now it's as simple as uh, grabbing a picture of what you're using you know like uh, I just finished up a run of Shrek mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks at a theater and I was taking pictures of the base I was using and everything and it's a Wilcox Sabre VL mm -hmm. um, and I just actually signed with those guys but you know, mm -hmm. I was taking pictures of it, just saying, "Hey, in the pit," um, and like you're saying, hashtagged everything with Wilcox guitars. And very important too, what people keep forgetting about, especially on Instagram, tag the photo. It's it's yeah. one thing to to put like um, hanging with, you know, Wilcox guitars and uh, talking about that in mm -hmm. in the text. That'll show up mm -hmm. on their thing that says, you know, John Moody's, you know, mentioned you in a comment. But mm -hmm. if you don't tag the photo, it doesn't show up on their feed. Right. You know, right. and that's key. Like that is the right. simplest thing that people keep forgetting about. Right. So it, it's really just, 
you know, it's, uh, I always joke around saying, you know, when you're an endorser, you got to sell out like Krusty the Clown. <laughs> but it's, you know, but it, I mean, it's really true. You're a, you're a poster child for these kind of things. So you want to make sure, like, if you're gigging out with the gear all the time, it's like, hey, th here's this, this. They'll probably share it. Like, I can even say, um, Mark over at Aguilar is killer on that stuff. That mm -hmm. man is Johnny on the spot because, you know, you anyone posts a picture of their amp, he's going to repost it. He's going to say a nice little yep. thing about you. And that's yep. that's what you got to do. You got to show yep. people that you're using it. Right. And, um, and especially, you know, um, back in the day, you know, when we were growing up, it was one of those things. Endorsements were for the um, the high profile people. Sure. You know, sure. but especially with social media now, you know, somebody like me who's, you know, almost all my gigs are under a pit in a little dark area because no one wants to look at me. Um, but, uh, you know, somebody like me can get some endorsements and that's how you yeah. do it, you know, because yeah. then, you know, there's so many different communities now, you know, all these theater communities that I'm in for pit musicians. Now they see all these posts that I'm doing and everyone, you know, is like, oh. John's using that. John's using this kind of thing. Dude, you know, here's the thing. <clears throat> here's the thing. Since, you know, sincerity as well. I, I, I think, like, the social media game, all that stuff is, is spot on. Um, I use stuff that I, that I use. I endorse stuff that I actually use. Right. Twice a month, somebody will ask me to make an introduction to them. To, to, to some company, Groove mm -hmm. Gear, Aguilar, Mono. It's like, why? Because yeah. you want a free case? You want, um, you're not going to get a free case. You're yeah. not going to get anything for free. I use stuff because it works. Yep. I, you know, there's, <laughs> you know, I got a $300 uh, uh, Groove Gear V Cart Solo. Right. I've been beating the crap out of that thing for, for four years now. Right? Did and I then when you I had to replace I, the wheels on mine? What's that? I, I had to replace the wheels on mine. Oh, is that right? Yeah, the little back ones because we tried to uh, tried to unload a, a cast iron bathtub with it. Fun. Yeah, and so but I even went back to Jay afterwards. I was like, so I did something I probably shouldn't have with my cart. How do I get new wheels? But anyway, and you know, you know Jay's Jay's great, man. I I. You know, look, man, there was a time when I would have said, I don't want to spend, you know, this kind of money on a cart. Mm -hmm. But I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, man. The terrain is, you know, we got hills. We got yeah, all kinds of stuff. We got, I do festivals where I'm rolling that thing around on gravel and stuff like that. I need something that's going to that's gonna hold up. Right. You know, I need stuff that's going to hold up. And I'm going to talk about it. So, you know, there are times when I'm like, hey, look, I got, you know. I'm almost max capacity on this cart, and right. you know I'm gonna take a picture and say, four years down the line, this thing is still rolling. You know, um, if I'm doing, you know, when I'm ever I'm doing something with Zig or you know a cool gig, I got my rig. Hey, you know, here's my my Aguilar shot or whatever. But yep. anyway, what else you got to add about this whole endorsement thing? I think we could probably talk about this a lot, a, a lot more. Yeah, we could talk about this forever. I would say. Um because you 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 talked about it a little bit, you know, on your um, when you're saying that people asking you to set up an intro uh, introduction to some of these other companies, is that um, you know obviously like you're saying you don't want to have a don't want to look for a handout, but it's also at the same time and I'm sure you know this too is that you know now that you are um, when you have an endorsement you are you know a spokesperson for the brand, yeah, um, you know so you got to be. I would say, you know, be a little careful about that. I mean, obviously, most of this stuff, too, you know, conduct yourself in a manner that would be, you know, professional anyway. Absolutely. But um, absolutely. Uh, I think one of the best email or, or podcast things I ever heard was from a guy named Dennis Milan, who is the owner of Proton Pedals okay. out of uh, South Carolina. Uh, super cool guy. Um and, but just shoots straight from the hip on it. And he said very specifically, too, um, if you're approaching a company, um, look at all your social media posts and try to see it from their eyes. You know, because yeah. obviously, if you're not pushing yourself, if you're not promoting any of this stuff um, yourself organically right now, 
how is that gonna how is a discount on a pedal or strings right. or an amp gonna right. change that and also or to- or if you or if you know if you're you know we live in some pretty interesting political times uh, right a really interesting political climate climate so you know I think if if, if I were uh, a company and I you know or even just as a you know just as a as an as a musician as a as an artist or whatever and I look at your social media feed and everything is over the top politics and, yep. and, and things like that you know that's a red flag, man. Oh yeah, that's a that's a real red flag. I mean, we are, uh, you know, I've got political opinions. I've you know mm-hmm. and, and, and things like that. But we, you know, we're in the public eye. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? And and our our bottom line is uh, is affected by the things that we put out on social media. Yeah. So. Um, you know, I'm not saying that everybody has to always be positive, pie in the sky or whatever, but if you're always a dark cloud and, and you're always, you know, everything is all politics all right. the time, that's that's not doing anybody any good. There's a reason why back in the day people <laughs> people kept their politics a secret. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, on, on that, really, really quick, I don't want to turn this into a politi- political conversation. I can't remember the guy's name right now. It starts with a D, and I... And I it was right after the election. Okay. He he sent out this uh, this thing this uh, mailer and he was he was saying you know here's why we shouldn't talk about politics and he showed this infographic mm-hmm. of the of the country and half of it was blue and half of it was red or you know right you know what I'm saying <clears throat> and he was just like saying you know these people are still your customers or your you know are people that work for companies that you want to have. Yep. relationships with or whatever your next door neighbors maybe voted a different way than you did yeah. or or whatever and so you know you know some people might look at this and say ah you sell out I'm, hey man do call it what you want but right we still exactly. gotta we still gotta navigate the world right. together so you know we you know and especially out. too it seems um like with that is that the social media thing there is no really friendly discourse on there I mean, there's really not. Sure. You know, people will sit back and they'll just spout out stuff that you know for a fact. They'd never say it to your face. Sure. You know? Sure. So it's, it's sure. you know, it's one of those things that's giving people a lot of, you know, a nice little soapbox to stand on. But at the same time, it's one of those, it's like, eh. Like you're saying, it's like, there's so many good people that I know that, yeah, I don't agree with them on that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, yeah. it's like, they're still good people. Yeah. You know? Absolutely, man. We got you know. There's a way to there's a way to handle handle all this stuff. Hey, man, right. we're we're like we're going long, so I wanna I wanna kind of uh, reel it in a little bit. I what yep. I what I wanna say real quick is if you're watching to uh, to my viewers to fans of John's, if you're watching this content right now and you dig this content, I want you to give this a thumbs up. I also want you to let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of this. John and I have been become uh, a Another, another, you know, I used to see John on the periphery, on the web, and, and different things like that, and I never imagined that we, we would be such close friends. That's um, true. And so, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful for his friendship. If you want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments below, because I know that, uh, I, I think John would agree, I would like to bring more content like this to you guys. So, John, and wrapping up, man. Yes, sir. Let's... Let's 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 bring it home with like maybe your five. I, I, just to recap it, five big tips on getting an endorsement deal. Uh, let's see, five big tips. Um, first, uh, use the stuff anyway. Um, Word up. Like you're saying, uh, never ask for a handout because it's not about gear. It's actually about building the relationship. Um, Keep your social media stuff in line with the image that you are presenting people. Um, make sure that if you do have an endorsement, you you publish it and post that stuff out for the world to hear because that mm-hmm. is your job at that point. You know, just uh, let me let me let me throw this one out here. Let me throw right. this out there. I think I think everything we're saying. Uh, kind of encompasses being genuine and there's a guy yeah. that I really like out there in the world people may have heard of him I just heard him say something today his name is Gary Vaynerchuk he said whenever you ask with expectation you lose mm-hmm. so 
I think the number one thing is 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 be genuine. Use the yeah. stuff and and build genuine relationships. Yep. Mr. Moody, I'm gonna let you roll, man. Love the tie, homie. Love the tie. I can't rock ties. Like well, that. I gotta let, let me give a quick shout out. This is from uh, Mo's Bow Ties out of Memphis. Uh, yeah, actually, you're right. A young kid. I want to say really? he's like 13 or so. Started the company up. Um, wow. The age may not be right, but it was kind of one of those. He wanted just something fun for uh, the younger audience. And so, um, yeah, this is one of his. And uh, they're great. It's one of the few ones I have that is a, uh, it's a pre-tie, meaning that it is, uh, there's a strap on it and things and everything. So I don't tie this one myself. But, I mean, it's cool enough that it's like going to rock this thing all day. Hey, see, there's a perfect example of building a relationship, using a product, and endorsing it. There so, you go. Hey, John. Yo, my man. I will catch you on the flip. All right? I've really enjoyed talking to you, brother. And uh, let's do it again. Dude, likewise. Anytime. All right, bro. All right. Peace.